if you don't know you're on the earth. You're on a planet in the universe designated by God for a training center so that you can be a tested citizen of eternal life. <laughs> oh, glory. Would you turn to Psalm 61, please? How many of y'all know we're in trying times? Are you being tried? What are you trying to do? <laughs> Glory to God. Trying times. Things are happening, aren't they? I don't know if uh, y'all saw the newsletter yet. Is it up yet? It's a hold up. I'm telling you. Anyways, it will be up. <laughs> Glory, Psalm 61. Is everybody there? Let's read verse 1 through 4. Oh, hallelujah. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you when my heart is what? Overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Has anybody ever been overwhelmed? <laughs> That's what trying times is about, to try to overwhelm people. That's what the powers of darkness are trying to do right now is overwhelm us. They're trying to overwhelm us with technology. They're trying to overwhelm us with trials, all kinds of things that are going on globally. They're trying to overwhelm us. Because when we become overwhelmed, it opens a door to many things. But he said, look, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm going to ask you to lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Not the phone. Hello? But the throne. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. What's he trying to say? Are we in the tabernacle right now? Yes. Why? Because we're two or more gathered together. He's in the midst. Amen. And when we worship together corporately, there's a stronger anointing. Demons hate the presence of God. So I will abide in your tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the shelter of your wings. This is so powerful. So when we are overwhelmed, we must be careful. One of the things about being overwhelmed, it's kind of a place where you, it's more than you can handle sometimes. And sometimes we try to handle when we're over, over, being overwhelmed. And, God, and the word says that God doesn't give you any more than you can handle. So you know when there's an overwhelming sensation coming on you, you need to stop whatever you're doing. And don't try and fix it. Step out of the atmosphere. Because it is an atmosphere that's overwhelming you. Does everybody understand? You know, it, it, this can happen anywhere. You could be at work and all of a sudden get overwhelmed. You could be driving and, and all of a sudden the enemy starts attacking you with all kinds of thoughts that overwhelm you. You can get overwhelmed with your past from guilt and condemnation. The enemy loves to overwhelm us. And then you can be overwhelmed with joy, which is great. You can get overwhelmed in God's presence. There's a difference. But there's, so there's a good overwhelming and a bad overwhelming. Amen? One is to harm you, and one is to bless you. And we want to get into God's presence where the overwhelming sensation of God and his love overtakes us all the time. All the time. Amen? Amen? So look, at there are things that can happen in our life. Uh, when we get overwhelmed by bad things, could be fear, anxiety, stress, whatever. Some people get overwhelmed when they're going to have company. <laughs> Only uh, seasons and holidays, Amen. you know, or an event that may be going on. They get overwhelmed. Whoa! <laughs> it 
People get overwhelmed when problems come. Finances. Health. Amen. <laughs> people with education come sometimes when they're getting ready for exams. They get overwhelmed. They're trying to cram everything in. They get overwhelmed. So one of the things we try to do is avoid or step out of that place where it's overwhelming because it begins to change your atmosphere. It begins to change you. Amen? So one of the things about overwhelming, it's an emotional pain. Overwhelming promotes an emotional pain. Anguish. And it opens the door to a specific spirit. It's called a distressing spirit. If you stay in that place of overwhelm, you'll open a door to a spirit called distressing spirit. And that spirit will bring torment. In Psalm 143, Psalm 143, distressing spirit. So a distressing spirit will promote emotional pain. It promotes emotional pain. Psalm 143. One of the things that the distressing spirit will also do, not only... Because torment is emotional pain, isn't it? Amen? One of the things the presence of the Spirit will do is begin to steal your identity. You know, when people get bad news of something, it can become overwhelming to them. When they lose a loved one, it can become overwhelming to them. But that's where you and I must be careful not to stay in that place of overwhelmed. And Psalm 143, is everybody there? Let's speak it, first four voices. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my suppl supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me. And in your righteousness, do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore my spirit is overwhelmed within me, and my heart within me is what? Distressed, distressed again. We become overwhelmed, opens the door to distressing spirit, where worry and fear, anxiety, and every other thing tries to overtake us. And one of the things you got to remember that fear protects pride. Pride protects self. And one of the things that protect fear is called anger. Anger. So when a person is usually overwhelmed and that distressing spirit comes, they become angry. In 1 Samuel 19, And most of the time, they want vengeance and vindication. First Samuel nineteen. In verse 9. Is everybody there? It says, Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hand. One of the things that opened the door to the distressing spirit was Saul's rebellion. God removed his presence and allowed a distressing spirit to come. 
So then, verse 10, Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. Again, pride is rebellion, which opens the door to judgment because Saul was prideful and rebellious. Distressing spirit of worry and fear, anxiety, which is a protector of it, is called anger. So David came to relieve Saul from the distressing spirit by wor worshiping the Lord and bringing the presence of God in. But Saul, still tormented by this distressing spirit, sought to kill David. He threw the spear at him. He didn't even realize he hated David so much. But yet he loved him so much. It was kind of a love-hate relationship. He respected David. He honored him. He, he raised him in many ways. In so many places, he wanted to, he wanted to, I mean, he even offered him his armor when he first came because he saw such boldness in David. He, he saw the anointing on David. But God prepared the exchange with David, so he put the anointing on David when he lifted the anointing from Saul. So in this, we got to understand that there are things that we can do to grieve the Spirit of God, to move and a distressing spirit will come. And the next thing you know, you're overwhelmed with everything. Everything. You know, one of the things about being overwhelmed and, and underneath a distressing spirit, many people become sick because the body is trying to fight stress. They become ill. Is everybody okay? In other words, in this area, one of the things that Saul was doing and not realizing, he was holding unforgiveness towards David. He was holding bitterness towards David. He was holding a grudge towards David. And that kept that door, that distressing spirit there. Amen. In 1 John chapter 4. Remember, Saul began to lose his identity. First John chapter 4. One of the things that the arm of Satan likes to do through the media is promote an overwhelming arena to people. Discouragement, despair, emotional pain. And what it does then, it... it Try, trying to cause individuals to lose their identity, especially believers, to try to move them from trusting God to trusting man. Amen. And we've got to be careful of that. You know, there's so much going on right now. I, you know, most of the media doesn't even, it blacks out. In fact, some of them have blacked out 100% about all the pedophile arrests. You know, there's been over 3,000 pedophile arrests already. Elite arrests. They haven't mentioned their names yet. But they black it right out. They even blacked out, I don't know if you know or not, but Trump in, in Korea, they didn't, they didn't do any of that. The only one that was opening that was Fox. They blacked that out. Can you imagine that? Here Trump was in, in the summit in, in Korea and they were blacking it out. But they didn't black out when he walked out. <laughs> because right now the media is controlled by Satan's arm. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Is everybody there? Love. Everyone say love. Love, love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world therefore there is what 
No fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves what? If there's torment, is there a distressing spirit? And okay, so here's the key. Perfect love. Perfect love of God. That spirit cannot stay. Perfect love. Why? Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Lack of love, not lack of lust. <laughs> lust wants, love gives. There is no fear in godly love because fear involves tormenting. Where there's tormenting, there's, there's distressing spirit. People who are still holding bitterness, grudges, unforgiveness, and so forth. You know, you can say you forgive, but still hold bitterness. You'll know that when somebody's name is mentioned and you go, oh. Amen. Or you don't have anything, you know, positive to say. It's because there's, if they're still holding a grudge, a distressing spirit's there. And he's being fed. And you can't come out of that cycle until you repent, turn away, and ask God to fill him with your perfect love. See, you can worship and get, not get access. Does everybody get it? One thing we want to do is worship and get access. That's why God requires that we all repent of our sins and transgressions and iniquities before we get in his presence. In 1 Samuel 16, because he's seeing his children fall into distressing spirits because they're becoming overwhelmed. Things are happening to us. You know, just think about it. If anyone had the right to be bitter, it would have been Jesus. <laughs> But what did he say on the cross? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Man, they'd have done that to me and you. We'd have been killing everybody. <laughs> I mean, they totally mistreated him with no cause at all. Just a stupid belief system. Infl infiltrated by Satan's kingdom. And that's still going on. That's the only thing that he can do is cause influence. Amen? The Bible requires us to love one another regardless of what. 1 Samuel 16, verse something, 14. Let's speak it. But the spirit of the Lord, what? Departed from Saul, and the distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Hello. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that when he will play it with his hand, when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, that you shall be what? Yeah. That you shall be well, because God's presence. But again, it's temporary. Does everybody get it? It's temporary. Until there's truly repentance and removal of bitterness, grudges, unforgiveness, that must go from our lives or that distressing spirit comes back and you'll find yourself in an overwhelmed state of being again, again, and again, no matter what you do. Proverbs 21. Oh, happy days. In verse 21. Proverbs 21, verse 21. Is everybody okay? He who follows righteousness and mercy finds what? Life. Follows righteousness and mercy. Righteousness and mercy. How many of y'all know forgiveness is mercy? Amen. 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 Finds life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue, 
keeps his soul from torment. Does everybody see that? Troubles is torment. It's emotional. Why? Because people say things and do things with their tongue, and it opens, what does it do? It grieves the spirit. The spirit steps out. The distressing spirit comes in and begins to dwell. Trouble so by mouth of the angry, complaining, bitter, and unforgiving. Ephesians 4. Now, they do come in multiple forms. But the fruit is all the same. Ephesians 4, 25. Let's speak it. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. That's called righteous anger. Amen. See, but this kind of anger doesn't hold anything. Does everybody get it? It don't, doesn't hold anything afterwards. It gets angry, and that's that. Let him who uh, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. So here we are being warned again. So we've got to be careful that there's nothing wrong with being angry. It's what you do with it. It's the same thing of being offended. The word says that we'll be offended, but it's what are you going to do with it? Are you going to allow that offense to continue to become bitterness? Become a grudge? Hold unforgiveness? Amen? Amen? We can't allow that to happen because it'll open the door to a distressing spirit and the next thing we know, we become overwhelmed. And one of the things we do not want to do is make place for the devil. Verse 28. Let him stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is what? Good. Everyone say good. <laughs> For necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now he's going to tell you what's going to grieve him. Verse 31. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be what? Kind, kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Wow. So he says, speak the truth. In other words, speak the truth to self, self-examination. Recognize that anger protects fear and associated spirits associated with anger and fear. Grieving the Holy Spirit causes the departure of his presence and incoming of distra distressing spirit, bringing confusion. One of the things that the Lord showed me this morning while he was telling me about this, I saw an arm go. It was reaching for logic. It was reaching for logic. Because uh, when, when that distressing spirit is there, we have a tendency to try to come out of it. But we begin to reach for logic, why, reason, and everything else associated with it. I need to understand this. No, you don't. You need to repent. Amen. Get rid of it and get filled with God's love. Amen? So I, I began to see the, uh, an arm reaching out for logic, reasoning, need to understand. And there was no answer given. The Lord was not releasing an answer. Until repent, turn, forgive, and release those by, of bitterness and grudges and anger. Releasing them with your mouth. Why? Because we've allowed in our own mouth a soul to be taken captive. 
Amen. You know, so many times we begin to look for our own release in this distress and we grasp any voice. Amen. Thinking it's going to relieve us. You know, and the, the first voice that usually comes up is anger. Bitterness and all the other stuff. We begin to grasp voices for release instead of trusting, resting, and waiting. And Psalm 24 spirits, we are seeing it happen all over. That's why there's angry mobs out there. They are distressed because the information that they've received to promote it. Oh, happy days. Psalm 24, verse 3. Is everybody there? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Amen. Clean hands. That means we haven't touched and agree with anything through thought. Clean hands and a one. And a pure heart. Well, out of the mouth speaks the what? Heart. Who may ascend in a hill or who may stand in his holy place who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. Well, listen, most of the time we become the idol. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Again, worship with no accents because of touch and agree with voices of the stranger in reason or unclean thoughts and anger, heart contaminated because of words, attitudes, and unchrist-like desires. Romans 8. You know, too many people are losing their blessings or the enemy stealing their blessings. <laughs> Businesses are crumbling. Marriages are being destroyed. Families are being broken up. I mean, even right now in the political arena, there's, <laughs> there's houses divided. A wife might be promoting one politician or political and the husband's promoting something else. Amen? It could be. And houses are being divided. But the word tells us that in these times, these things would happen. Hallelujah. Romans 8. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I always look at condemnation as torment. <laughs> Hello? I mean, so if there's torment, there's what? Distress. Emotional pain. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So he tells us that one of the things will bring anything that's associated with walking in the flesh Open the door to overwhelming and distressing spirits. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the, in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Oh, distressing Spirit will allow moments of clarity just to reload again 
and promote anguish. Does everybody get it? This distressing spirit will allow moments of clarity. In other words, it backs off just so that the can reload and then goes in and attacks again to empty. Does everybody get this? I mean, these are vicious, evil spirits. If you look at Saul's life, he had moments of clarity. And then that spirit would come back again. It reloads so, that, <laughs> so it can be fed again, promoting the flesh also. Colossians 3. You know, I, I've never really seen so much. I mean, there's been an intensity of the Holy Spirit after a spirit. But he's really intense about after this spirit. I mean, you know, we know about Jezebel and Ahab and so forth and uh, these spirits. But this is a spirit that they also carried. And wherever they went, it was released in their atmosphere. Colossians 3. In verse 12. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it together. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on what? Here, there it is. That's the way of escape. Love. In the presence of God. Pure love. It's perfect love which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be what? Thankful. So when that distressing spirit and overwhelming is, there isn't peace, is there? It says here, verse 16, let the what? Word of Christ dwell in you richly. In other words, let it be right releasing out of your tongue. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all the same uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hallelujah. Put on Christ, take off flesh. Put on love which brings peace and hold no bitterness, grudges, unforgiveness, or which will continue to open door to a distressing and tormenting spirits. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. And first three, first four, uh, let's see, Philippians 2. Yes, yeah, starting at verse 1. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Training for reigning. <laughs> let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of the love, if any fellowship of the Spirit and any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness in mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Ooh. 
Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being born, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be like equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. What does Christ is desiring us to be like-minded with Christ, with him, right? Like-minded and, and with the same love. Avoiding selfish attitude, motives, desires, and pride. Matthew 6. You know, when you think about, just th think about what music does to people. You know, when, when there's demonic uh, transformation in, in music, it can overwhelm an individual and they can do crazy stuff. Because that distressing spirit causes people to get goofy. Amen? Promote violence and so forth. And Matthew 6, verse 31. Therefore do not what? Is anybody there? Do not what? Don't worry. That's not a name of a person. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? <laughs> For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all things will be what? They'll come your way. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Wow. So he wants us to seek the will of the kingdom and his righteousness. Amen? He wants us to seek his will and his righteousness. And we'll close at Romans 14. If you're truly seeking this, now you got to think about this. He's asking us to seek the will of his kingdom and his righteousness. Can you imagine if we sought his righteousness associated with every decision? Amen. You think our decisions would be a little bit different? Amen. Amen. Romans 14. See, the problem is, is people seek his righteousness yesterday. Or they might even seek his righteousness in the morning. But they don't seek his righteousness with every decision. Again, if we're walking in his presence and being led by his spirit, righteousness is at every decision. Verse 16. Romans 14, 16. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken as of evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Spirit, meaning in the presence of God. In his presence. Now, in his presence is that fullness of his love. Every time we go into his presence, more and more of his love is perfecting in us. Unless we're still holding things that are rejecting. Amen. Remember bitterness, unforgiveness, grudges, and all the other stuff will prevent you will worship, but not access will not be granted. Because remember, the Holy Spirit does not come without the blood. So where there is not true forgiveness in our members, it's rejecting. It's rejecting the presence of God. And you know, many people don't even get and understand this. That's why there's times of clarity, but then there isn't. There's distress. The kingdom will... Listen, when, when we truly are seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness... There'll be an emotional fruit. And that's called 
righteousness, peace, and joy, not distress and torment. You will always know by the fruit. Does everybody get it? If we'll judge our own fruit, we'll know what's associated, what we're associating with. And then if we'll search that out and examine ourselves, we'll find out what we're still holding on to that we haven't released. Amen? We want to get clean hands and a pure heart. We want to want to walk in the fullness of Christ, like-minded, like-hearted, like-willed, and his presence so he can use us wherever he sends us. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, and we take this opportunity, Lord, and we forgive and bless. Hold no grudges. Break every powers of darkness that would try to hinder us in any way whatsoever that have opened the door to any distressing or tormenting spirits. And we command those spirits to loosen to leave us and every single one in this room and go to the pit in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're asking for your filling of your perfect love. Perfect love which casts out all fear with no torment. Where we can truly trust you. Rest in you. Wait on you. And know that you're faithful to complete what you started. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.